Hello everyone. This is the first in a series of videos I'm going to do showing in real time, and that is painful real time, uh, the process of building a city with SimCity 4. Those of you that have seen Hal Jackie's series, Building a City from Scratch, this is a similar idea, though I'm not uh, going to be using the same process he uses. In this case, I'm going to be building the city from the bottom up without uh, cheating on money and I won't be randomly plopping buildings all over the place like he does. That's not to say his particular video was not quite uh, interesting. I highly recommend anybody who hasn't seen how Jackie's building a city from scratch on YouTube to go ahead and watch it. Some of his work is quite uh, instructive and it will make you feel better uh, that uh, you're not the only one that has issues uh, putting the roads and stuff in the right place. First of all, you can see here, uh, this is the region I'm working with. This is actually the Ring of Fire region, which I obtained from Simtropolis. If you're wondering about the different uh, appearances of some of the city tiles, uh, that's an artifact of the way the region was generated from the map. Uh, the ones that have a normal looking texture are the tiles that I've actually opened and saved since I brought the region in. You can see I've put in some highways through the, the region. Uh, these uh, will basically form the backbone of the transportation network. I've done a little bit of work on a couple of other cities. Uh, there's uh, Edwardsville here, which uh, has uh, some real development going on there. And you can see some agricultural land over here. And then up over in the corner here, there's another city over here. As you can see, the highways wander around between the mountain ranges. The city tile I'll be working on for this series is the one labeled Cityville here in the middle. The highways are already present for the, the regional uh, highways in the transportation network. I've already opened the city and set those up, so it's not really quite totally from scratch, but these highways, uh, the rules in this particular challenge I've set myself, is that those highways must remain where they are. The highways being essentially owned by the whatever uh, state or whatever happens to be responsible for this area. As you can see, the name is quite clever, Cityville. As the series progresses, I may actually add some development in the surrounding tiles, but it shouldn't be necessary for the purpose of this series. Now let's actually get into the city. While this is loading, uh, I'm actually running this on a Linux machine uh, under Wine. It runs fairly well, but I did need to do some fiddling to get the various plugins to load correctly, the uh, mods that is. Uh, that includes things like the network add-on mod, which I use uh, extensively for the RHW, and also the network widening mod. I have a few others in there. But the thing of it is a lot of these mods rely on the file load order to function correctly and on Linux, the file systems are not sorted when directories are scanned. I had to work around this by creating a simple user space file system that uh, intercepts basically only the uh, directory read uh, functions and sorts the directory listing appropriately uh, so that when 
the mods load, they load in the correct order. Otherwise, I had some weird problems with textures and so on with uh, various bits of the mods. There are a few weird glitches that do show up from time to time due to it running under wine, but they're fairly minor and the game does run about as stably as it does under Windows. I'm actually running it at the full resolution of my monitor, which is 1920 by 1200. So the uh, there's a little bit more visible than there would be on a typical resolution size. It seems to have been stable for as long as I've been doing it, but there if it does cause some trouble on the video capture, I may have to dial it back for future installments. Okay, so. Here's the uh, tile. This one is relatively flat. It's not completely flat, but it's relatively flat, so it shouldn't provide too many obstacles for actually building the city. Uh, in the middle, the junction between the two highways, there's a trumpet interchange here. The main east-west highway is four lanes in each direction, and the north-south highway here is actually just a connector between this east-west highway going through this tile and an, an east-west highway a little further north that had come down uh, around the south side of some mountains. Obviously some uh, acceleration and deceleration lanes would be ideal here but at this point, there's not a lot of traffic given that this interchange is in the middle of nowhere. I may extend the uh, lane somewhat uh, once there is some actual traffic. Um, and as you can see, the uh, road is fairly bumpy as, uh, as, as uh, a lot of players would, would call it. I may reconstruct this interchange with a different structure uh, once the uh, city is developed some, especially if I decide to extend this, this road further south. I should mention it's perfectly allowed to extend the roads. It, it's just required that there be a highway going east-west with at least this capacity and a highway going north-south from that highway up with at least this capacity. Now the first thing we need for the city to function is some basic services. Uh, we don't even necessarily need to connect it up to anything uh, for the city to start to grow. So at this point uh, I will leave off on connecting it up to a highway. I will eventually connect it up with an interchange onto this highway. Uh, that's another uh, thing is at grade intersections on the regional uh, highways uh, are not generally uh, accepted in this particular uh, setup. Uh, now it can be done with RHW4 but Preferably, I'm going to keep it with interchanges on these. So, the first thing we need is a power plant. Uh, let's see. Now, you might think that, it, that we need to be concerned about pollution and so on at this point, but in fact, this early on, we need to be more concerned about cost but we also need enough capacity that we don't end up bankrupting the city uh, when the power demand starts growing rapidly. It's quite tempting to set up a bunch of windmills. Uh, they are clean but they don't provide a lot of power and, or, uh, and therefore a lot of bang for their buck. So the natural gas plant is cleaner but it's fairly expensive. Uh, the oil plant is very dirty and fairly expensive, but the coal plant, it generates quite a lot of power at 6,000 megawatt hours, but it only costs 250 simoleons monthly. 
So it's actually a good starting power plant. As the city develops, we'll eventually get access to solar and later hydrogen power, which are cleaner and uh, quite a lot more uh, friendly uh, for uh, pollution. For now, however, we'll build a coal plant somewhere out here and we'll give it a road heading off to where to somewhere where we'll just randomly pick a spot to start building our uh, city uh, which is really a town here's one of those glitches i was mentioning the uh, ui just disappears uh, often initially in the city when uh, a keyboard shortcut or something is used it only ever happens the first time near as i can tell but this does seem to be a glitch related to my system. Now, we also need power lines to get the power from the power plant to where we're going to build our initial city. I'm doing it some distance from the power plant because I want to avoid having the pollution interfere with the early uh, city residents. Now I'm going to set up initially some low density residential uh, uh, lots. And in this case I'm going to give them a 12 tile lot or length for the block. And I'm going to simply set things up as blocks. Uh, it's quite boring, but at this stage, we don't really need much more. And I'm using streets because they're cheaper and we don't need a lot of traffic capacity at this point. Now note, the game is on pause at this point so I will start the simulation shortly once I've uh, finished constructing uh, a number of uh, lots here. Now we definitely need a fair amount of residential at this point, but we'll also need a little bit of commercial and initially we'll need some industrial just to get the uh, job count up high enough that our sims have somewhere to actually work. Now I'm using again low density lots here. Uh, you'll see a lot of uh, places where people will say don't bother with the low density commercial. It actually isn't that bad this early in the game. Later on there's really not much point using it but it's okay for now. Now here's a little trick. If I were to build the street right through this power line, it would disappear it all the way back to the previous pylon here. But if you put a lot on it, and then you build a street through it, the game will move the pylon back. It's quite useful if you are running without the game pause, and this is the only power line generating power into your entire city. You really don't want your sims to go without power. They tend to leave rapidly in that case. Now, I'll start the simulation here. We have enough where sims can start actually coming into the city and they will potentially have somewhere to work. Now, at this point, I have a choice I can uh, set up a bunch of uh, industry, heavy industry, dirty industry, that sort of thing. And that will provide a lot of jobs for the Sims. It will also cause a lot of pollution. It will affect the groundwater. Uh, it will generally make the living conditions less than desirable. And that's something that is, you know, somewhat uh, difficult to avoid if you start a city from this level. Now as you can see, now that the demand indicators are showing something useful, 
Uh, we have high demand for industry of all levels. We have some commercial demand, but we have we have high wealth uh, residential that wants to come in, but no low wealth or medium wealth. That's probably an artifact of what's already existing in the region. And that's something we'll have to deal with. However, we do have commercial developing here. And you can see that our expenses are not that far away from balanced. Now we can do this the easy way and simply just set up a bunch of the dirty, um, heavy in, in manufacturing industry. Or we could take a an agricultural path here to bootstrap everything. Now agricultural it's only useful early in the game when your population is relatively low you don't have a lot of um, other jobs available. But it's also quite easy to set up. Basically you zone low density industrial and we can do that quite easily. There we go, we have some farmland. Now theoretically that should fill in. And it looks like it's 18 tiles per side on that. Let's add some more here. I'm using relatively large farms here, uh, partly for realism and partly out of laziness because it's a pain to uh, zone a whole bunch of small farms. Here I'll add, add some more over here. And I'll put some more on this side as well. If you're wondering how I'm measuring the lengths of these things, I'm not actually counting squares. I happen to note that the cost of building a street for one tile is one simoleon. So if the listed cost is 18, then I'm 18 tiles long. However, that fails as soon as you start getting slopes in the way. Or if you simply can't read. There we go. And here's some more. One of the things uh, building the agricultural land does also is it allows us to build some of the rewards related to agriculture things like the state fair uh, which is uh, you know kind of nice for your sims uh, it uh, does uh, improve certain uh, uh, stats uh, they do relieve uh, demand caps so the more items you can build that relieve demand caps the higher your population can be You may note that the uh, trick of, of using the 
uh, amount uh, for the build cost. Uh, it doesn't quite work for measuring if you have slightly off level uh, ground. Uh, the engineers in Sim Nation are fairly good at fitting things in, but it still costs to do the terraforming required. Now, if you take a look, the uh, budget is now balanced. Uh, we're running a surplus now, and all it took was adding a few farms. And note that we still don't have any people living in the city. This has got to be an artifact of the, um, of the actual uh, existing development in the region. Now that we have a functional uh, city, even if nobody's living here, uh, though presumably there's people living on the farms, but the uh, game is showing zero population, which is kind of odd. But this, this is just like uh, some play strategies where you build an entire city that's all industry, and you don't bother with people and then that provides all of the industrial uh, demand industrial jobs and so on that you need for all of the adjacent cities i prefer not playing with that strategy it just seems wrong it seems like a cheat you know it just feels like that uh, so i don't generally do that anyway uh, we might as well, now that we're running a surplus, actually connect this whole operation to the, the regional transport network. At this stage, I'm going to do that with a road. At some point, this will probably need to be expanded, but I'll use a road for now. And we'll use a simple diamond interchange here. using uh, we'll use the level one viaducts here so we'll have to dig up the viaducts these are a feature of the recent uh, network add-on mod the nam uh, there we go draggable elevated road viaducts here we'll use a no we won't use an on slope we We'll use the road. And here we'll link it up. Now, we need to build the ramps. This is easy. We simply leave a few tiles on either side with an RHW and bring it in and we build a ramp. Note I'm using the draggable construction technique here. It's actually quite um, efficient. It also means you have fewer tiles that are blocked by invisible construction features. Okay, and I did three tiles on either side there, so we'll do the same here. Uh, symmetry looks better on these things and that's not going to work and here we go there we go and you can see we have some uh, truck traffic uh, traveling now uh, let's see although why it's heading southbound is beyond me there we go. Now we have a complete uh, diamond interchange. For those of you uh, familiar, more familiar with the uh, older compact stuff, this does seem rather large, 
But remember, the this is a large city tile. Those are theoretically four kilometers per side. Uh, with at that scale, this is actually a reasonably sized interchange. Now, I'm going to smooth out those curves on the ramps just for appearance, and that requires finding the right entry. There it is, curves. And we need an MIS curve. There we go. And another one over here. And another one here. And another one here. As I'm sure you'll agree, that looks considerably better. And there, now the, uh, the newly developed uh, I guess town uh, is actually connected to the regional transportation. And we can see there's still very high demand for the industry and also fairly high demand for the uh, commercial stuff. Without the existing region, uh, these residential uh, lots would have uh, filled in uh, pretty much immediately. So this is what happens when you have an existing region. It's some unusual gameplay elements can occur. Uh, that's part of the challenge of region play, really. Now, I gotta check to see if this neighbor connection is working properly. And we'll put the paths on just to see. And yes, the, you can see the evidence of the paths going down the side here. That means the connection should be working properly. However, I'm not convinced that it is. So I'm going to reconstruct the neighbor connection here. Okay. And let's see, neighbor connection. We don't need the transparent one. We need to line up the yellow lines here. I still don't know how the European players deal with lining these up. So they have white lines on both sides. Okay, so I've reconstructed that neighbor connection. And that should, uh, that should keep the game going a little better. Uh, this draw pass thing comes from the extra cheats DLL file, uh, which can be obtained from the various uh, locations. I see that we have uh, truck traffic heading the other way here as well. Well, that's not necessarily a problem. It's actually going to all three uh, uh, city uh, uh, connections, which is actually a good thing. If we turn off the paths, we don't need them. Whoops, it's hide paths to turn it off. There we go. Yeah, let's see, let's see what the traffic's doing. Yes, it's going to all three connection points. And that's a good thing. Okay. So, since clearly uh, we're not getting any people into the city, uh, the way things stand right now, uh, we need something more to entice people in. So, let's go over here, some distance away from the... Um, the rest of the area and we'll make that a neighbor connector there 
Uh, oh, I see I'm going to have to fix that. That'll actually carry traffic for the moment, so I'll leave that alone for now. Uh, first off, we need to create... Let's create uh, some streets. One, two, three, four, use an 8 by 12 block here and We'll, we'll zone this for industrial here, and I'll go for high density industrial here, and let's put another block in. In case you're wondering how I get the uh, streets uh, to disappear, shift does that while you're zoning. Okay, now we need to bring some power across. And now you can see right away the industrial area is filling in. Now to fix this. I think I'm going to need to put a starter in here. That's going to be destructive, so I'll pause it while I do that. And RHW starters need an MIS. There, there it is. And that's facing the right way. And we'll finish off the ramp, reconnect the road, and we're good. Now uh, we'll get the simulation going again. Again, I put the industrial way off to the side here so that it uh, the pollution from the industrial doesn't cause trouble for the residential area and also the agricultural area uh, over here. The general idea behind this is to get the uh, residential demand for the low and medium wealth uh, sims to get up to something where the uh, lots that are zoned over there will actually fill in. Now, I should mention that the high wealth sims will happily fill in on the low density uh, zones, uh, but the requirements for them to come are uh, quite a lot higher than for the lower wealth ones. Uh, the high wealth ones tend to expect things like education and fire coverage and police coverage and health, that sort of thing. Now, we don't actually have the budget to provide much of that at this stage, uh, which is why they haven't come in. Uh, at some point, we're going to have to deal with trash and a few other things. And uh, now that the industry is starting up, we actually have more of a surplus here. So the first thing I'm going to do is put some fire coverage in. Uh, because dealing with fire emergencies is a real pain. Um, it's problematic for the agricultural area too, but it also makes the area a little more desirable to Sims. And we'll also cover off the industrial area over here. Now this gives us uh, fire trucks that, that we can use to respond to areas outside of the fire coverage. 
ultimately we'll want to cover the entire uh, city tile just so at least where the development is so we never have to actually uh, put out a fire as you can see we have some residential developing now the uh, demands have started to improve here uh, some of that will be due to the increased industrial some of it's the fire uh, coverage uh, it makes the area more desirable And there you see our population has finally moved up above zero. We have 70 sims now. Just for fun, let's add some more industrial over here. Uh, very likely later on in the game, uh, this will get demolished and replaced with some other development. But we need to get the population to start coming in and the uh, and grow before we can actually do much beyond uh, beyond just getting things moving slowly. As you can see, all of our agricultural land is filled in. There's some room that we can add more. Uh, let's see, the demand is still high. Let's do that. It's something to do while we wait for everything else to happen. Okay. Something to be aware of is that agricultural uh, uh, land, uh, it, it tends to be very hard on the water table. So if you uh, are providing water to your sims, you need to make sure your pump or whatever is not near the agricultural land. Otherwise, the water uh, tends to be uh, unsuitable. Whoops. And here, let's take a look at the pollution map. See, here's the water pollution overlay. You can see quite a lot around the agricultural land. Again, we have a bunch at the coal plant and around the uh, industrial area, but relatively little coming from the actual uh, residential and commercial zones here. Now there is an interesting lot that can be obtained, I, I believe from uh, SC4 Devotion, uh, called the, it's called the Brita Water Filter, and it is exactly what it sounds like. Yeah, you build a Brita Water Filter and it cleans the groundwater for some area around the filter. Uh, that does seem a bit like cheating. Um, but it is about the only really cost-effective way to clean up the water table if you're having issues with it. Uh, the treatment plants are not terribly um, helpful. They don't pump a lot of water. Um, and if you have really heavy water pollution, uh, they are, it's very expensive to deal with it with treatment plants. There is another thing, like here's the air pollution thing. The nice thing about agriculture is it doesn't cause the air pollution. And you can see the pollution from the coal plant, it's pretty heavy. And you can see the pollution coming from the in industry over here. Uh, there's, a, there's a lot from uh, Sim Goober, 
I believe it is. Uh, it's a, an air filtering plant. Uh, it's somewhat uh, fiddly to make it work because it needs to be on perfectly flat ground and it has to have water. Uh, but it actually does a fair job of cleaning up the air pollution from uh, industries and so on. So you can actually get away with having a lot of heavy polluters in your city as long as you have those uh, air filtering uh, plants. I don't happen to have that particular uh, building installed. Uh, and again, it does feel a bit like cheating, uh, but it uh, it can be worth uh, going there, uh, depending. Uh, you can make an argument that it's no different than uh, other technologies, you know, like putting it, putting in new technologies on smokestacks and so on to clean up emissions. But then again, you can argue just about anything into being valid if you try hard enough. Anyway, uh, back to the rest of everything here. Okay, now our residential demand is looking a little more sane now. You know, the commercial demand really hasn't changed, nor has the industrial. I suspect that's because there's uh, very little industrial uh, capacity in the rest of the region, uh, especially compared to the actual population of the region. And let's take a look at some things here. And garbage is growing. So I think it's time that we uh, deal with it. We have room in the budget to deal with the trash now. And we'll plant the, we'll use a, a trash, um, like a garbage dump here. So uh, so people are tempted to use a waste to energy plant. Uh, those are fairly expensive to run though and unless you have a heavy amount of trash they don't generate a lot of power either uh, the recycling centers again they're quite expensive they don't really uh, uh, reduce uh, quite so much as uh, you as you really want to Landfills, however, uh, they don't tend to impact the desirability of uh, the industrial areas, at least for as far as dirty and manufacturing industries go. Uh, and while you'll see discussions about landfills being expensive to maintain and garbage being really difficult to deal with, it really isn't if you are careful. So here I put a landfill and over here. It doesn't matter where on the city tile you put the landfill, as long as it's connected to the transportation network, uh, the trash will accumulate there. And contrary to uh, what you might think, uh, trash, once it goes into the landfill, doesn't just stay there forever. It does decompose slowly over time at, at, a at some rate. So. Uh, and the more trash that's in there, the faster it decomposes. So uh, if you, you would eventually get to a point where your city reaches a steady state uh, between amount of landfill space required and the amount of trash being produced. Uh, so it's not really so critical. Uh, but, you know, it does look ugly, and uh, it certainly, your sims don't want to live beside the garbage dump. I, I don't know about you, but I certainly don't either. But anyway, uh, your sims are happier if the trash has somewhere to go. Uh, if you leave it too long, you'll actually see piles of trash around your city. And your sims will be unhappy, and they'll start leaving, and that's generally bad. But as you can see... Uh, now, as you can see, the cost structure went up quite a bit from putting the landfill in, but part of that is the cost of cleaning up the existing accumulated trash. Uh, because the landfill just opened, it's filling up, but eventually uh, the cost goes down a little bit to 
match the equilibrium of the city. So you can see here, here is the garbage capacity of the city now that I've built that landfill. Here's the amount of trash. As you can see, it's quite low compared to the size of the landfill, and that's fine. Largely unused landfill tiles don't cost a huge amount to keep around. And as long as you have enough of them, uh, the trash will degenerate uh, uh, at some rate. So you'll end up actually costing less. The more trash that's in the landfill, the more it costs to operate. Uh, which makes some sense. Now here you see the cost has gone back down quite a bit here and that's because the collection cost of the equation has gone down. You can see that in the uh, where is it? No that's not it. In the utilities is it? Uh, yes in the sanitation department. Yeah pickup and delivery that's what takes it to the landfill and then the cost of operating the landfill. Right after I built the landfill, this pickup and delivery number would have been quite high. And now that it's hit the steady state and it's only picking up the new stuff and not catching up, the cost will be uh, quite a bit lower. Now, let's go over here and uh, Let's see, we still have a demand for residential. We really want our population to grow. So let's add uh, some more residential space. And let's add some more commercial space as well. And we'll go over here as well. Since clearly there's a demand for it. I should mention that I'm not using any of the uh, uh, fancy mods that uh, really affect the uh, demand uh, structure. Uh, I'm also not using the CAM, the Colossus add-on mod. Uh, that, um, that one has some issues uh, related to uh, demand on, uh, I think it's industrial. Uh, it tends to double things up uh, just due to the fact that it needs to replace some values that are actually in the stock uh, uh, data files. And also, uh, you may have, uh, if you've looked around at it a bit, you know, it's, it's quite nice. It gives you uh, some additional growth stages for your lots, but it... Uh, to really uh, get a lot of benefit out of it, you end up with, uh, at least if you, you're not really familiar with things, you end up with a sort of dependency hell where you end up having to chase down about 400 dependencies. Um, and some of those dependencies are made pretty much of unobtainium. It's impossible to find them anymore. Uh, so, uh, you know, you can avoid that if you avoid the so-called starter packs, which basically include, uh, uh, you know, files to convert existing developed uh, content to the cam. But, uh, you know, if you avoid those, then you don't really have that issue. But then you don't really get the real benefit of the cam either. Uh, although some of the, uh, you know, you do end up with some benefits overall. Uh, but to make it work right, you have to actually modify the stock DAT files that come with the game. And that's a little bit uh, daunting, especially if you don't know what you're doing, you haven't done it before. 
Um, on my particular installation, I have modified the one uh, thing. Uh, there is a bug in the sock files which uh, affects high-tech industry um, uh, jobs and satisfying demand. Uh, I've put that fix in, which uh, seems doesn't really seem to affect the gameplay all that much, but I'm sure it helps somewhere along the way. Here we are, we're up to 1,600 people here. Uh, we can see that the uh, the advisors are mentioning uh, uh, water uh, now. Uh, and actually, we've got a uh, decent surplus, so let's actually put some water uh, services in. We'll start with a water pump. Uh, it needs power. Uh, we'll stick it, say, over here where there isn't where there isn't a lot of uh, pollution coming from anywhere actually yeah we'll stick it over here it's also out of the way uh, and whoops we'll put some pipes to it now the most benefit is going to come from providing water to the commercial and uh, residential areas here there's also some benefit providing water over to the industrial over here there isn't a lot of benefit providing it to the farms though one thing water does do is reduce the flammability of the buildings uh, that it services. Now we'll need to also bring some power to the pump but let's get rid of that extraneous pipe here. Okay now let's bring some power to the pump. There we go. Now the pump can provide water and we can see that if we look at the water overlay eventually. Wait, is there a pipe going into the pump? There must not be. Oh, there we go. We have to wait for the data update. There, we see we have water over in these two areas. Having water increases the property values, but it also allows higher wealth uh, residential to spawn. And as you can see, we're still running a surplus here. Now you need to keep a careful eye on that uh, because you know it, it's tempting to build a whole bunch of stuff all at once before you actually have the tax base to pay for it. Now let's see. Okay, they're they're offering me a mayor's house monthly cost as well within our budget. Now this actually relieves some demand caps, but it also makes it also has some other beneficial effects. So. I'll let the mayor move in and clean out some of this here. Now we done all this work it would be a shame if the game crashed at this point and I really should have been saving all along here so let's just save the game quickly here now I just did a quick save there and that's control alt s uh, that saves quite quickly uh, because it doesn't bother updating the region view thumbnails and that's uh, useful when you need to save uh, regularly when you're trying to avoid things uh, you know crashing and so on now we don't have a lot of stuff here that's likely to cause a crash so it's not much of a risk but later on when there's things like transit stops like subways and bus stops and uh, any other things like that then it can be quite um, quite risky to go a long term without crashing uh, you know, without saving. 
Uh, and also, if we start building complicated interchanges, uh, something other than your basic diamond like this, um, it starts to get uh, risky. And you, you, know, you don't want to have to duplicate a whole bunch of stuff that you just finished getting working just the way you want it. So it's a good idea to save regularly. Now here's a, an interesting one. Uh, it's complaining about the, uh, the water pollution. Now, if you just went off that, you would assume that you have a problem. Uh, let's look at the water pollution overlay. So, you see we have great big pollution over here on the farms. We have it around and around the industry. But, here's the thing. The water source is outside the pollution. Now, pipes going through the polluted area do not pick up the pollution. The water is still clean in the pipes. And that's important, an important factor. So even though we have lots of water pollution here, the water is clean in the pipes. The pipes are not affected by it. So it's not so critical to clean this up. Now, if we didn't, uh, and we had, say, a body of water, say, right here, you would see the pollution in the water. And you can, if I turn off this view, uh, you can kind of see the pollution in the air over here. Uh, but uh, that's, yeah, there we go. You see, here it is. Uh, I'm not sure if that'll come through in the final video. It's fairly subtle, but uh, it shows up easily on the screen here. I'm recording at the full resolution, so uh, it should be quite uh, should be quite visible. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to need to shrink, th shrink the video uh, before I upload to YouTube, so I'm not sure what the uh, ultimate situation is going to be there. Um, hopefully YouTube will take the 16 by 10 aspect ratio, uh, but uh, we'll see. Okay, and you can see all of the uh, lots are pretty much full. And here we go. We finally got a good low wealth demand going here. Uh, and that's, that's, that's good. Uh, that will allow our city to uh, grow further. I'm going to give the residential an expansion here. Uh, at some point, I'm going to have to build some uh, education uh, facilities. Uh, that's one of the mods that I, that I have is some uh, stuff from SimGuber that uh, provides uh, education a little more easily for uh, large cities. Uh, I think it's Sim Goober anyway, uh, and I've got uh, some other stuff. I've also got the Mercy General uh, Hospital thing, which uh, makes uh, healthcare so much easier because it has su such so much higher uh, capacity. Uh, now it costs uh, similarly, uh, but the capacity is so much higher that uh, it actually becomes practical to provide good healthcare to your Sims. There we go. There's some more residential. Got to make sure to provide water. Now, here's the thing that I you may notice that I've been running the water pipes along the roads. That's really just a personal uh, play preference, uh, putting the pipes along the roads. Um, it, it, my, you know, like in, as far as the game's concerned, you can build the pipes anywhere. And it doesn't really matter as long as there's a pipe there, the close enough, then the uh, lots will get their water. Uh, but it seemed to me to be a little bit odd to do it that way. If you go straight under the the zones, you know, under the buildings, then how do you maintain your water pipes? So it occurred to me that you know, at least the city I live in, they uh, tend to put the water pipes under the street. Uh, which means 
it's under city-owned property if they ever have to maintain the water mains. And these pipes are really the equivalent of a water main. The feeder pipes going into the, into the individual lots are not shown. Uh, if you had to build pipes into every single lot, it would be really tedious. Uh, and I think that's probably why that's the case. And, you know, in my city, it's the landowner who has to pay to have the service connected to the main, uh, not the city. So well, that does make some level of sense as well. As you can see, we've got a fair, fair number of uh, houses in here. Uh, and... Uh, and as you can see, the low density uh, commercial uh, stuff is not, you know, small, tiny buildings and so on. So it's, uh, you know, the notion that it's useless is, uh, you know, I don't know where it came from, but it really isn't useless. You know, let's uh, add some more here. Now, obviously, this particular uh, layout for a city is somewhat boring. Uh, you know, the good old uh, grid thing. Uh, now, the thing is, SimCity, at least up to SimCity 4, is really designed around the grid. Things don't work quite so well when you start throwing odd angles into things. Now, the, the NAM does uh, give you some things that are uh, quite uh, useful as far as layouts go, like the fractional angle uh, roads and stuff, which basically that's uh, sp you know splitting the difference between uh, orthogonal and the, f and the 45 degree diagonals. Uh, with the diagonals, uh, laying out uh, lots along the diagonals is uh, quite, um, well, it can be quite unpleasant overall. Uh, is you often end up having to come down to laying out the lots individually and you can't lay them down in blocks. But this early in the city development, there's really not much point in getting clever on the layout. Uh, although we certainly can, that's, uh, that's certainly possible. And, uh, you know, once the city is established a little bit better and various city services have started to uh, come in uh, once I start building the education and so on, uh, I'll probably start building some higher end areas which will have more of the curly Q type roads and so on. And when I do that, then we can uh, put in some, uh, some fancy stuff. And also, at some point, I'll start uh, higher density development somewhere in the uh, city tile. Uh, now, this area is not necessarily going to turn out to be the actual uh, downtown core when the city starts getting denser. Uh, it may, uh, but it probably won't. I'll probably end up building something new, uh, say, over here or something like that. Uh, as you can see, we have quite a bit of land area that's that's available in one of these tiles. But for now, uh, simply expanding on this grid uh, is, well, it, it's boring. It's actually quite believable. The, there's a lot of towns that are structured this way, uh, especially on plains and relatively flat ground. Um, and it's a quick way to get the uh, city moving. Here we go. We've got a really good um, uh, level of surplus going here. As you can see, our uh, simoleon balance is slowly get, making its way back up to the original um, 500,000 that you start with. 
So I think it's time to add some additional services. In particular, education is critical, especially if we want to get the higher, uh, the high tech industry and so on coming in. So let's see what we have available here. We have a elementary school and we have a high school and we have a goober high school. Okay. Okay, so what do I put in here? This Enyadi Urban School is fairly expensive, but as you can see, uh, it has quite a high capacity. Now, the advantage it has is it educates all ages. It basically takes the uh, place of uh, the elementary schools and high schools and so on. Uh, I'll probably use one or two of those later just because the capacity is really useful for dense areas. But for now, let's let's plant an elementary school. Now we really want to put this somewhere in the middle of our existing population so that uh, we can uh, cover it off without having to uh, build two of them. So this is going to demolish some houses, but we can we can easily compensate for that. But we'll put a school in there and start getting the education level to increase. So if you take a look at the education graph, we've got a bunch of imbeciles in the city right now. Education level around 25, I would guess, by that line. You really want it up around the 100 to 120 range to start getting the high-tech industry demand. And if you can keep it up over 160, even better. That's actually fairly easy to do in a later game when you have some real uh, surplus coming in. And what's it complaining about with no water, no way? Okay, let's take a look at the water overlay. Uh, oh, I see, we're coming up to our capacity on water. Okay, so that's easily solved. We'll just plant another pump over there. Uh, okay. Now, the large pump would be a, a nice choice, but uh, at this point, we don't really have uh, enough income to absorb the 3,500 simoleon monthly cost. So, two small pumps will do for now. And, uh, and now we can see we're running at 48% capacity instead of 100% uh, plus, so uh, that's a lot better. Uh, let's take a look at that again. Let's look at the... Aha! Okay, so uh, the latest expansion over here wasn't... So the road's going to be there, so we'll put the pipe there. And maybe I'll build that road as well. Now, normally at this stage of the game, uh, you won't actually have quite so much uh, commercial stuff that will spawn this fast. Uh, again, this is partly because of the existing dynamics of my region. Anyway, uh, I'm not going to look the gift horse in the mouth there. Uh, anything that develops and doesn't abandon, uh, you end up with tax revenue off it. So that's a good thing. And also, it does provide the Sims somewhere to work. Uh, here we go. We've got some higher wealth uh, residential uh, spawning here. And uh, that's, uh, that's kind of good, actually. Uh, and let's see what have we got here we got a farmers market uh, is is uh, available uh, now that's a good thing to have so I'm gonna actually build it 
and we'll put it right here. Um, and the Sims are looking for a uh, well they're looking for a church might as well give it to them because if you notice the monthly cost is nothing so there's really no drawback to building it and it's all advantages and it lifts some of the uh, demand cap on uh, residential as well okay uh, now just because it's demanding uh, expansion for industry doesn't mean you have to build more zones for industry uh, okay so so here we go now you, you can always demolish these things but if you demolish it and the conditions that allowed you to build it in the first place are gone you then lose the benefits of the building so it may be that building uh, say the farmers market uh, is great now but if we ever need to relocate it we might not be able to if the preconditions for the reward aren't there anymore so it, we may just have created a uh, on an unmovable object for later in the game now obviously we can demolish it but if we want to keep it we can't rebuild it uh, that could be problematic uh, oh that's cute varieties of plums 1530 uh, okay uh, weddings per week 53 nice Seems rather high, doesn't it? Uh, where's the mayor's house? Let's see. Number of uninvited guests. Heh, <laughs> cute. Well, let's see how the school's doing. Yeah, we got 17 students. Um, anyway, uh, we can adjust the area covered by the school by adjusting the bus funding. Uh, it, it, you know, and that actually turns out to be useful, especially later in the game when you have multiple schools covering an area. Uh, you can actually reduce the overlap and have a better understanding of which students are going where based on that. And also, when you have lots of schools, if you reduce the bus funding uh, so that it's not covering areas needlessly, you can save a fair bit of uh, fair bit of cash over the course of the of a. Uh, uh, a fiscal year. Um, so anyway, let's take a look here. Um, so far, so good. The uh, agriculture demand's coming down a bit. Now that's partly because absolutely everything pretty much uh, satisfies the agricultural demand. So um, there's no need to. You know, that's why it's difficult to grow farms later on in the game. Uh, in fact, it's downright impossible later on when you have a nice, thriving metropolis going. Now, well, let's see. Now, traffic's not an issue in the city at this point because we don't have a huge population that's going uh, a lot of places. Uh, now, I do the traffic simulator I'm running on the, with the NAM is the uh, really high capacity one uh, so that's partly why we don't have a uh, a, a traffic uh, issue right now uh, let's just see uh, but even so uh, for morning we're only getting we're getting a relatively low volume there uh, what's the evening have uh, no traffic so apparently nobody's going over to work in the industrial complexes there uh, let's see. Yeah, apparently not. Uh, let's just see over here. Uh, apparently. Yeah, apparently the industries don't need workers. Um, kind of bizarre that. 
Uh, but that's what you get with uh, these uh, simulations, especially since uh, SimCity doesn't actually simulate every single uh, resident. Uh, it uh, basically fudges things. And that's for obvious reasons. Uh, you, you want to reduce the computational complexity as much as you can uh, for something like this, especially for when this was made. Uh, this was a copyright you may have seen on the startup screen in 2003. Uh, and, uh, you know, computers were still relatively underpowered then uh, compared to now, especially, uh, it, you know, if you wanted to have the fancy graphics we have here. Okay, now I like you know, the population's dropped a little bit here, and that that happens when you get these uh, mansion type things spawning. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to expand the residential here. Okay, now the temptation here is to start putting in the higher density uh, zoning, but that's still a little bit premature here uh, until we've got um, a much higher uh, density going on, or, or population going on. Now, here we go. Extend the water system. This is the church. It's not so critical if these reward buildings don't have water, but the residential types really do need it. Okay. And as you can see, some of the new stuff is outside the influence of the elementary school. But here, if we expand the bus service, we just about cover it all. And we'll just say that's good enough for now. Now we actually have enough uh, resources. We can put a high school as well. Let's take a look at the education level. It's going up slowly. Now the way the education works, it does take a while to increase it uh, once it uh, is down. Anyway, let's put in a high school. Uh, where is it here? Education, that's elementary. There's a high school. Now, as you can see, the high school has a larger uh, influence sphere. Uh, we'll put it there. Now, let's give the people we displace somewhere to live. Make sure they have water. There we go. Okay, so with the high school and the elementary school, the education levels should slowly increase without much interference from me for the moment. Okay.
Now, you'll note I'm being quite methodical about this, like slow. Uh, the reason for that is it's very easy to expand too fast and then find yourself in trouble. And once you end up in that situation, it's hard to get out of it. And that's, uh, you know, it's, you can actually very easily drive your city into bankruptcy if you're not careful. Um, okay, I was talking about a graveyard here. Again, it costs nothing. So there's no reason not to build the graveyard. And then we'll put the graveyard over here. Now, as you can see, when you start building things like this, it tends to break whatever grid structure you've been working with. Now, I've been using a four tile wide uh, block, basically a five by 13 grid. This, the cemetery is five by five. And that doesn't fit into any, fair, any really tame grid. So as a result, uh, I'm going to end up having to perturb the uh, street network around it. And, you know, that's fine. Uh, and you'll note over here, the uh, church is three by three. It's the same thing. I'm going to end up having to perturb the uh, street uh, uh, network around that. And again, that's fine. Um, here we go. It's complaining about no transportation. What that really means is the streets are full and it's taking too long to get to the job because clearly there is a street there. Uh, so why that's the case, I'm not sure. Let's um, let's do some queries and see where where things are going. And it's well, that shouldn't be doing that. And that shouldn't be a problem either. So, so, yeah, the street is not overloaded <coughs> by any stretch of the imagination. As you can see, we have some pedestrians here. Um, that's a, a cool thing as well. Uh, the, you know, the Sims will walk if they can, as, as you can see. Um, let's see. Yeah, and we don't really have that big of a problem. And what? The, oh, okay, that's the. Uh, That's the industrial traffic from the farms. Okay, the trucks. Now, uh, the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to start working on some higher density, small residential lots. You know, like the uh, modern neighborhoods, like the newer neighborhoods in a lot of modern cities where you've got really small lots with houses all stacked together. Now, as you can see here, we've got some fair demand on the residential, so I should be able to get away with doing that. So I'll start doing that over, oh, let's do it over here. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna be putting a whole bunch of one by one uh, residential lots. Now there's not much point making these more than low density, simply because uh, there's not much that qualifies as higher density that will grow in them. Now this basically end up with a two uh, uh, two um, tiles between roads for this. Now to make this spawn properly we have to let it fill in half of the block before we zone the other half otherwise you get, a, get the, the length two uh, lots coming in. And there's no need to keep the grid absolutely perfect here. So let's do this. Whoops, that's a little premature. There you go. A whole bunch of bunch of them just spawned here.
Okay, and this one filled in, so now we can do this. Again, you can't expand this sort of thing too fast or you end up with uh, a whole bunch of empty lots, uh, which is not overly helpful for uh, actually filling in your city or growing your population. make sure there's water. There we go. That will solve that. Now if I speed up the simulation some of this stuff will happen faster. Notice we've got a fair surplus thing going on here now, and it's starting to get to the point where we can actually afford to ramp up our service offerings. Uh, the, the thing I'm going to do is I'm going to build a hospital. Now, I don't use the standard hospitals because they're just, they're fine for this level, but they tend to get tedious to manage is you can't really afford to put a full-fledged hospital at this point based on the cost, but their coverage area versus their size, their capacity, is not practical once your city starts getting fairly dense. So let's put the, let's zoom out so we can, as you can see, it has quite a large coverage area, the Mercy General. So I can put the Mercy General here And if we access it here, you can see the ambulance funding. I can reduce that quite significantly and still cover my sims, as you can see here. And it's got, uh, now where is it? Pacing capacity, we got 12.5 here. We don't need anywhere near that at this point. We can drop it to say 1,000. And now our, our monthly cost is not really, it, it's even better than a regular Max's hospital would be. But it's not so low as to unbalance everything. And it does feel more realistic to be able to have a large hospital like that with a large coverage area. Anyway, uh, we can afford the hospital now, so it's a reasonable idea to have one. Um, this will actually help the population as well. Uh, Sims will live longer and therefore the population will go up. As you can see, the education level is slowly increasing still. Now let's look at, where is it? Life expectancy. Uh, we're up in the 57 year range. Um, with the hospital, that should increase. If you look at the population by age, yeah, it's in the in that range. These numbers will increase as the hospital is effective. Now there's one more serv city service we haven't provided and that's police. But as you can see there there aren't a lot there isn't a lot of crime. Let's look at the overlay for crime. Here we go. 
as you can see, there's not a lot of crime going on in our neighborhoods. Uh, there is some over here, uh, but not a lot, and there's some out in the farms. But otherwise, it's fairly, uh, fairly tame. So there's really no need for police stations just yet. We'll just make sure to keep that in mind as, uh, as more stuff is constructed here. And let's fill in the rest of this area here now that uh, it's spawning. Uh, very likely the hospital is helping with that. Here, I'll, I'll speed up the simulation for a bit here. There we go. And now I'll fill this in. And let the simulation run for a bit. Those should spawn. There we go. There's most of them. Now, just because there are houses there, it won't prevent the two tile ones from filling in, uh, as you can see here. But it does. Um, It, it kind of works, uh, you know, it gives it a denser feel. Uh, I kind of like it, you know, the, the denser feel. Uh, eventually these, uh, these bits will fill in with denser stuff as well. Uh, one of my particular favorites is, uh, I don't see any of them in here. Uh, there's some uh, lots that are basically infills where you get two houses wide per tile. But that might need the medium density zoning to to spawn, which would make sense. Okay. Well, basically, as you can see, um, oh, apparently we need we're uh, running into limits on power. Uh, we're well, we're not hurting for power, but we're. We're over 90%, and that's when it starts warning. Uh, so, you know, we can easily solve that by building another power plant. And I'm going to do that. But ultimately, we want the high tech and uh, so on so we can get the solar plant. Uh, but for now, I'll put another coal plant over here. That makes the pollution worse, obviously. But it does mean that we don't run out of power and you really really don't want to run out of power brownouts are bad now let's take a look in here well the demand is still fairly reasonable so now just because these are high doesn't mean like the goal isn't to build until these go low uh, the goal is to keep the city sustainable, and so far it is, uh, as you can see. Uh, we have a sustainable budget here. Obviously, we could cut taxes, but uh, at some point there's going to be additional city services that are required, and they will cost some money to run. So it's better to leave taxes alone for the moment. Well, anyway, I'm going to end this part here. Um, as you can see, we've got the basic uh, starting bits for the city. And uh, from this point, uh, it's really a matter of growing the population some and uh, possibly increasing the density. Uh, next time, uh, we'll be looking at... Uh, We'll be looking at improving the uh, density, probably building another neighborhood uh, somewhere else on the tile, a uh, little bit like a second uh, town that was taken over by the city. Uh, but for now, I'm going to call it a part, as Hal Jackie would say, and I'll see you next time.
and you can see it takes a little while to exit back to the region with this particular region. The region's huge, so uh, it's, uh, you know, imagine on an older computer, it'd take forever. It takes forever on my computer, which is relatively modern. There we go. And apparently we have a glitch there. Uh, okay, that's interesting. Anyway, here's the city. That might have, might have something to do with the aspect ratio of the screen. Anyway, uh, back at the region, you can see the uh, change in the city. And uh, again, I'm going to call that a part. I'll see you next time.